Hey everyone, I'm Laura Brody. I'm the Director of Customer Lifecycle and Growth at Ritual. And today we're gonna to be talking using real-time data to power and personalize customer journey. So I wanna kind of rewind and talk about um, what the main metrics that we're looking at here um, in the lifecycle and growth role, and also you know, more generally when we're talking about customer lifetime value. So we're talking about retention, we're talking about order frequency, and we're talking about order value. Um, so Ritual is a direct-to-consumer wellness brand, and we offer clean and effective vitamin formulations for women. Um, and right now we offer three products on a subscription basis. So we offer Essential for Women, which is a women's multivitamin, Essential Prenatal, and Essential for Women 50 Plus. So we've got a pretty wide range of audiences that we're trying to reach here. Um, and when we're talking about LTB, we're talking about the long game. So we're not talking about single email A-B tests that are going to give us an immediate result. Of course we're doing that, but we're not talking about that right now. Um, we're doing clean tests over a really long period of time, and we're prioritizing those long-term metrics over short-term wins. And when we say long-term metrics, we're talking 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, even a year or two as opposed to you know, something where you're gonna send an email out today and tomorrow you're gonna to know the result of the test, if it worked or not, and how you should proceed from there. So the goal that we have in mind here is to create a personalized customer journey that delivers an increase on LTV by engaging customers in the right way. So I'm gonna take it a step back and have a look at what our stack looked like before we made some changes in order to really start testing into this long-term LTV metric and kind of get out of that short-term headspace. So this was our stack before. So we had a bunch of cloud data sources. Um, Segment was one that we used a lot for website event behavior. All of that was coming into our analytics database. Which we use Snowflake, uh, we have Looker as our BI tool, and then we were powering a variety of different customer journey touch points. So we were using Klaviyo as our ESP, we have inbox experiences, and then we have a pretty rich experience um, in the customer account on ritual.com. But we were really doing a lot of manual audience segmentation and analysis. So this is what it looked like. We were um, you know, either creating audiences using the ESP, which looked like pretty individual events. So did someone click on an email? Did they view a certain page on the website? And we were using that to either enroll people in workflows or to add them to lists to kick off campaigns. Or when we wanted to get a bit more detailed, we were creating manual lists. So this looked like going into Looker, adding a bunch of filters, you know, did they leave a five-star review? Have they referred more than one person? Have they been subscribed for a certain amount of time? We'd put all that information together, we'd generate a kind of snapshot in time, and we'd upload that into our ESP. So while this gave us a high level of detail, it didn't give us a lot of flexibility. So really by this process, we were super reliant on manual list creation through our BI tool or as a SQL query. The lists were not real time. So if I pulled it yesterday, it was gonna be yesterday's data. The customer may have changed things between now and then, but it wouldn't be reflected in the audience that we have. And um, the workflow enrollment rules were really limited to things like transactions, website events, and the engagement that people had with um, emails. So we weren't combining these metrics and it was giving us a pretty surface level picture. And um, we were still able to personalize the journey, but we weren't really able to layer onto it and add the level of complexity that we wanted to achieve. And we had sort of two problems. One, every time we emailed customers, it resulted in some level of churn. Ritual is a subscription-based business, and so we bill our customers on a monthly basis, and they get shipments on a monthly basis. Of course, emailing customers is going to result in some level of churn, but it's not necessarily related. Just because I emailed someone today does not mean that it caused them to cancel. They could have been wanting to cancel anyways, and I just happened to email them. And so it really created this sort of um, unwillingness to email customers, and it wasn't necessarily warranted. But then on the flip side, we were getting tons of really positive customer feedback that people loved our emails. This isn't something that you typically hear people saying about brands. They're not like, keep emailing me more. Um, I just want to receive emails from your company. But every time we go to survey our customers, they said, you know, that email that you sent me three months in, they remembered it, they loved it, they were looking for more. Um, it was truly an email marketer's dream. Um, and so we were sort of trying to fight this. Um, you know, how can we 
get this communication out to the customers, but feel really comfortable doing it and do it in a way that's actually going to improve their experience and improve the LTV that we're seeing. And so how do we speak to our customers um, differently? How do we separate our best customers from those who are at risk of churning and nurture them differently? The solution that we found was that we wanted to introduce segment personas. So our problem was really that we couldn't create these rich audiences in between. We had a very limited amount of data that we were able to trigger off of. So using segment personas, we were able to use a few things. We were able to use computed traits as well as persona audiences. Um, and we were able to send these downstream into Iterable to create much more dynamic audiences that were going to be both real time and also based on aggregates of metrics or aggregates of customer behaviors to develop a, a more in-depth picture of the customer that we wanted to be emailing. So now we're able to use persona audiences to really enroll users in the most relevant journey for them. And so what does the most relevant journey look like? Here's just a few examples of what we're doing and you know the list could, could go on, um, but three different kind of types of customers and how we would want to engage them differently. So the first one could be someone that we want to nurture. So they're pretty happy. They might need a little bit of help along the way, more education, more content, or more um, information about how the subscription service works. So as an example, we can look at customers who snoozed within the first 90 days of being a customer. So snoozing for us looks like someone who decides that they want to push out their next shipment and not get it on that regular 30-day cadence. So typically it's, you know, I didn't take my vitamins every day. I'm starting to see them pile up and I just need a bit more time. So I like to say it's like a gym membership. You know, you don't want to cancel it. You have really great intentions of going, but you just didn't quite make it enough this month. And so for this audience, we wanted to nurture them with habit-focused content that was really going to help them with adherence and hopefully get them back on track of taking their vitamins on a daily basis. Another example could be an upsell audience. So customers who have a high propensity to adopt a certain product. This year we have a lot of really exciting product launches and so we need to understand which of our customers are interested in those products and nurture them in an appropriate way based on their interest. So here we would be would be looking at something like a propensity to adopt that product based off a model. So we would be pulling in tons of different signals based on you know, website visits, um, third-party data that we may have available, anything that we have to understand a customer's interest level in that new product. And then we would enroll them in the appropriate workflow or workflows based on that. And then a third category, obviously, being a subscription basis uh, based business is customers who are at risk and they're at risk of churning. So an example here would be a pretty straightforward one, but customers who've recently attempted to cancel. We have a flow in place where not necessarily everyone who starts the cancellation process actually ends up canceling. Um, you know, we're able to offer content and potentially discounts for people to stick around on their subscription. But someone who you know, tried to cancel yesterday might not want to hear from me today with a bunch of information about new products or other things that they could try out from Ritual. So we could create a holdout list. So it's not always about what the email communication or um, you know, SMS journey or what have you is for that customer. Sometimes the most relevant journey for that customer is don't send them any communication for a little bit of time. So we have that option as well. So I want to kind of dig into the first example of where we're nurturing customers with something that we have live right now and have been getting a lot of really positive feedback on. It's also a pretty straightforward one um, that hopefully will be easy for everyone to understand. And we'll walk through how we're setting that up in segment personas, how we're pushing that through to iterable, and then how we're actually reporting on the results afterwards. So here we have a Habits 101 series. So this is a content-focused series focused on habit buildings. And it's for people who have trouble sticking to their brand new vitamin habits. So basically people who use the snooze feature to push out their next order. So we have a lot of content here about the best time of day to take your vitamins, how you can remember to take your vitamins, the actual benefit of incorporating daily habits into your schedule. Uh, promoting things like our Apple Watch app, et cetera. So there's a whole bunch of really great content focused around habit building, and we're going to send that to people who took advantage of the snooze function. So kind of breaking down how it works. First, we're going to create an audience using segment persona audiences, and this is going to be pretty straightforward. It will be they have a status of snooze, so they're currently pushing out their next order, 
and they're pretty new. So they've been a customer for less than 90 days. We're gonna send that downstream to Iterable as an event. So we're gonna send an audience entered event and we're also gonna add them to a list of current snoozers. So people that are snoozed right now. And then when they end up exiting that, so after that 90 days passes, we're gonna remove them from the list. And I'll explain a bit more um, in a minute about how we use lists to help kind of balance the communications. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kick off an iterable workflow. So when they enter the audience, we're gonna trigger the workflow in iterable. And then we're actually not gonna send this communication to 100% of people who enter the audience. We're only gonna send it to half and we're gonna keep the other half as a 50% holdout group. So what this will let us do is measure the difference in retention, LTV and other metrics for two groups of people that did the same behavior, but that were nurtured differently after they did it. And then we're gonna send all of this information into Looker and we're gonna measure it. Like I said, we're not just measuring this on a you know 30 day or one day, one week type basis. We're looking at it for the long term. So did people who received this communication today actually end up being a better customer? Did this help them build a better habit? So here's how we have it set up in segment persona audiences. So we're bringing in a SQL trait with a flag for people that are currently snoozed. And then we're also checking just to make sure that they're pretty new customers. So they have order completed within the last 90 days. It gets way more complicated than this, but I'll, I'll spare you guys um, and give you a, a kind of easy to track example. Um, then we're gonna be bringing them into Iterable. So you can see here that we have the workflow being kicked off with a custom event, and that custom event is on current snoozer audience entered. We're gonna wait a little bit. We like to send all of our habit type messaging early on in the week, so we pick Monday mornings at 6 a.m and we're gonna just hold everyone till that Monday bucket. Then we're gonna just run everyone through a series of filters, just making sure that they're still an active subscriber by the time that we go around to sending the email. And then we're gonna do the split for the 50% test group versus the holdout. And then we're gonna start sending the emails. So we have the email sent there, making sure we're doing all of our filtering before we actually send the email. And then after that, we're gonna be reporting on it in Looker. And so we're bringing the iterable list memberships into Looker, and then we're using that to actually compare the test versus the holdout group. And we're measuring this over time and looking at it based on cohorts. So typically I would look at this on a monthly cohort, so people that were enrolled into this campaign in a given month. But early on, you might wanna even break it down further and look at it on a weekly basis since we're sending the email on a weekly um, cadence as well. Then we're gonna track the ongoing retention metrics like percent active, count of cancellations, and we're gonna do that over a pretty long period of time. So this is where the discipline comes in. All right, so implementation checklist. Wanna really break down what you need to look for um, and what the questions are that you should be asking yourself before you get set up to do this. So it can seem kind of confusing when you say, okay, I wanna take advantage of something like segment personas and I have all these journeys that I wanna create and you just kind of dive in and you don't have a good understanding of how the data flows and how you actually wanna accomplish this because you need to create the audiences in segment, you need to find a way to action them in iterable and then you need to find a way to make sure that you're reporting on it on a long-term basis in order for this full picture to come together. So the first question is on the segment iterable side of things. So how am I gonna send the persona's data into iterable? And really understanding if you wanna do that as an identify or as a track. So there's sort of plus and minus for both of these. An identify call is gonna keep the data stored at the contact level. So in iterable, if you're looking at one individual contact and you're looking at their user fields, basically there'll be a true false value for this if it's an audience. And then if it's a computed trait, it'll just have the trait. Um, if you're sending it as an identify call, then it will just send as an audience entered and audience exited event, or sorry, as a track. Um, and so tracks are really good when you're like, wanna discard the audience after the fact. So in this case, if I'm enrolling people into the current snoozers audience, I'm just doing it once. I'm gonna send them this campaign. I wanna track that they were a part of it, but I don't necessarily need to know and go back to that information. So I would opt to do it as a track event in this situation. Identify calls can be really great in other situations. Like if I want to know, you know, is this a person who's interested in our 50 plus product? Yes or no at all. And I want to be able to 
constantly reference back to that data. So you just want to really think about the plus and minuses of this. Also, if you send it as an identify, it'll be on that user profile for a while slash forever. I'm actually not even sure. Um, and so you just want to be mindful of what you're sending through. And then once you get everyone into iterable, you really want to make sure that you're not enrolling people into a million journeys at once. And so how am I going to ensure that users aren't receiving overlapping messaging? So what I love to do is have the team set up um, list membership for anyone that's currently enrolled in a specific workflow. And that gives you a really clear way to reference at the beginning of another workflow. You know, Don't enroll anyone who's already in list A, B, or C, which means they're currently receiving emails from another workflow. And you can kind of reference that throughout the workflow. So if someone fell out of another flow, you could send them communications within that one, or you could you know, try and re-enroll them in that flow maybe a week later and just check the list. So it's a really clean way to understand where all of your users are without having to dig into any like waiting nodes or anything like that within specific workflows. And then the third point, how are we actually going to track all of this? And how am I going to track the impact of it over time? So sending the list membership into your BI tool, we use Looker, has been a really, really great way of tracking this over a long period of time. So what we'll do is we'll have the fact that someone's on the holdout list, the test list, we'll have all of those list memberships and we'll send that into Looker so that when we're reporting on it, we could set up cohorts. So people that were entered in a workflow this week or this month, we can look at list membership. So were they part of the holdout or were they part of the test? And then we can look at the metrics over time. So count of cancellations, percentage of them still active, or the amount of money that they've spent since then. Uh, so this is a really clean way to actually report on this type of thing outside of reporting that you might do within iterable, like just purchase events for more of a non-purchaser audience. Um, one call out here is to remember to use a list that's going to include everyone. So don't remove people from these lists when they exit the workflow, because um, that'll really throw off your tracking. Um, so these are sort of three main areas that you want to look at. So how am I going to take the information from segment personas and bring it into iterable? How am I actually going to make sure that people are getting the right journey once they're in iterable? And then how am I going to report on it? So following all of these steps, you should be able to kick off a lot of different workflows that are all working in parallel and everyone is getting the most valuable message for them at that given time, whether it's an upsell message, a nurture message, or if they're just at risk and you should really hold off and send them nothing for a little bit of time. Um, so what does that look like for us and what's next? We've really been able to do three things. So the first one is that we've increased our email A-B testing velocity like crazy. And we're able to test based on richer consumer data, like looking at a propensity model to do a certain action or adopt a certain product versus something like a page view. And so we're not just spinning our wheels doing things that you know might give us a tiny little win tomorrow, but aren't really impacting the long term of the business. We're also able to create audiences in a much more agile way. And this can support big moments like product launches. So when you're gearing up for a big moment, if you have to be scrambling to create all of your audience segmentation and lists and all of that the night before, week before, it's going to be super stressful. You're probably not going to go into the launch or the big moment with as much complexity as it might warrant because there just isn't the time to pull together this level of audience segmentation. Um, and the audiences are definitely not going to be as real time as possible. So you're going to be missing out and not giving the optimal message to at least some percentage of users. And also, we're now able to give more journeys and more options, but it has far less complexity on our end. So at the end of the day, we're delivering better customer experiences, but in an easier to execute way, which is really you know, the dream and what we're looking to do here. Uh, so that's basically it, how we're able to use segment persona audiences to power a real-time customer journey in iterable and really find ways to unlock that increased LTV. So I'm going to be hanging out in the networking lounge. If you have any questions after, love to nerd out on all of this stuff and you know talk specifics of integrations and how you can hook up the different tools. Obviously, this is one way to do it, but the beauty of these tools is there's so many different ways to approach it and figure out you know exactly what works best for your business. And that's always the, the best part when you figure out and you kind of crack the code to know how you want to set this up for the long term. So hope to chat with you all soon.